Okay, question eight. Um, the random variable x has the distribution x follows by the distribution with 30 and 0 0.6. And we're after the probability of x being greater than or equal to 16. Now, um, remember what we're looking for in this is as soon as we as soon as we start, we're thinking, is it something we can use for tables or not? And 30. Well, that is one of the values in the table. So we go straight to our formula booklet. In our formula booklet, we have all of the, the probability tables there. The 31 is the last one before it goes on to something else in the booklet. So there it is. So we're going to get our n equals 30 table. On page 15, it looks like, of your booklet. So n equals 30. And we're looking for um, particular values in here. Well, look, we're, n is 30, so we look at the 30 table. There it is. And p is 0 0.6. So that means 30 independent trials with a probability of success in each one of 0 0.6. So there's 0 0.6 here. And the question says, find the probability of x being greater than or equal to 16. Think about what this means. That's the number of successes. So our successes could be, well, they could be any number from 0 up to 30, couldn't they? But we're interested in x greater than or equal to 16. The table, however, shows us less than or equal to probabilities. So greater than or equal to 16, well, that's the opposite of it being less than or equal to 15. So the first thing we want from this is that the probability of x being greater than or equal to 16 is 1 minus the probability of x being less than or equal to 15. The complement of it being greater than or equal to 16 is less than or equal to 15. So 15 is the key value in our table that we're looking for. There is 15. And so where that meets the bit that we wanted is that value there <coughs> in the 0 0.6 column, 0.1754. We're doing 1 minus 0.1754, which is what is it? 0.8. Two, four, six. I think Would that be right. Okay. There we go. Just two marks for doing that because it was just looking at the value in the table. It then says, part two: the random variable y is distribution b four zero point seven. Now look, the table, the first table we've got, is n equals five. So the formula just shows you the. Less than or equal to. It shows you less than or equal to probabilities. Okay. Yeah. Um, four, the first table in the booklet is five, n equals five. So as soon as we see n equals four, b4, 0 0.7 there, we know we have to work out the probabilities on our own for this. <coughs> so when it says for part A, probability that y. Is it y equals 2 that we're after? Yep. When it says that, we have to work out this probability ourselves. It's not that difficult a thing to do. This is in the formula booklet. It's um, NCR for C2. And that means two successes, so 0 0.7 squared, and two failures, so 0.3 squared as well, because the total number of trials is 4. Stick that in the calculator and we get something like 0 0.265, I think, to three significant figures. There we go. Um, right, now, um, the next bit of the question said, Three values of y are chosen at random. There's a random blue box on that. Find the probability that their total is 10. <coughs> now this is a, a bit of an odd concept to think about. That, so three values of y. Well, y 
is a result of these four trials. And so y can take the value of 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, because it's the number of successes. Four lots of y are chosen, three values of y are chosen, and their total is 10. So how can I make 10 from three numbers added together, where those numbers have to be between 0 and 4 inclusive? I can think of only two ways, I think, I could do that. I could do that by getting 4 and 4 and 2, or 4, 3, 3. Okay. I can't do it with 3, 5, 2, because 5 isn't allowed, and I'm not allowed to use wing backs. <laughs> I put a little football joke. Right. Um, so I could do it in these ways. Now, if we think about this as well, I've got to work out the probabilities of these things, haven't I? Um, and also, I've got to think of other things as well. 442, that can happen in three different ways, can't it? It could be 442 or 424 or 244. So that's three times. And that is um, getting a 4 twice. Now, getting a 4 from y, the only way I could get 4 as my result of y is if I had 4 successes. So that is 0 0.7 to the power of 4, for 4 successes. That 4 I get by doing 0 0.7 to the power of 4. And the 2, well the 2 was my answer to this one. 0.265. And it's three times because that could happen in any of those orders. And this one here, again, this could happen <coughs> in any one of three ways. It could be 433 or 343 or 334. And that is a 4 again, so that's 0 0.7 to the 4, probability of a 4. And the probability of getting 3. Well, that is 0. Point, what is that? Uh, that's 4C3, 0. 0.7 cubed times 0. 0.3. And that's, that needs to happen twice, doesn't it? Okay, I need to consider that happening both times. So that is squared, probability of a 3 times probability of a 3 again. I've got to add together these two numbers. Now what have I got out of all of this? I better actually work some of these things out. So I've just got that as being 0 0.0458, and this one I get 0 0.1220 zero, and for that one, and if I add these two together, it is 0 0.169 to three significant figures. And there we go. No, it's not. It's 0 0.168. Sorry, 1 point. Not 0 0.1678. So I rounded it incorrectly. Oh, don't round it incorrectly. There we are. 0 0.168.
There we are. That was, I thought that was quite tough, and I remember students doing that and finding that really quite difficult, the whole 433, 442 thing that's going on. Possibly the toughest little bit of the paper, I thought. And that's maths. <laughs>